What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. He's alive, Obi-Wan. Anakin Skywalker is alive. I got time. <laughs> I got some time. I got some time. You know, I like what I do over here. To, to be honest with you, I really do. I, I like what I do. Despite of the trolls, the people that's coming in there trying to get some hard comments and everything like that, which which is cool. That's what y'all do. I get it. You know, but the Recruiter Call Channel is, is here for people that wants to get information, at least a little bit of information that I can give them. They come here for, you know, the reactions or the, you know, the crazy videos that I come across and all like that. And they come here for the calls, mainly the calls, because they want to hear who I'm talking to and what kind of information that I'm getting out of them. They can use the questions that I ask or generate and form their own questions when they are seeking employment in the trucking industry. Now, did I start off by by doing this because of a job or anything like that? No, no. Honestly, I started off because I kind of wish that it was something like this back when I started. Maybe I wouldn't have started with uh, US Express. Maybe I would have Maybe I would have went to Prime and got my CDL. You, you see where I'm going with this? But the decisions that I made, I didn't have resources or enough resources to kind of point me in the right direction. Now, there was, again, groups and stuff like that. But it's like when you when you put a question out there, it's like going fishing. Got you a dollar. Oh, you almost had it. You gotta be quicker than that. Oh. Having you, you're not gonna catch the right one because you're catching all of the all, all of the ones that you don't want. You see what I'm saying? If if that makes any sense. So today we're going to talk about we're going to talk about 2023, and is 2023 a good year? to take the leap in the owner operation. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. So let me just put this out there before I start. Maybe I'm not the right one to talk about owner operations because number one, from all my research and all of my uh, stuff that I gathered throughout the years, I don't want to become an owner operator. I am cool where I'm at. Now, I'm not not to say that owner operations is not something that I might not be interested in down the trough. But as of right now in 2023 and maybe 2024, at this particular time, no, I'm not interested in becoming an owner operator. I'm not interested in going out and, and buying my own truck. I'm not interested in going through all the rigors of becoming an owner operator. But I know some of you guys say, well, why are you talking about it if you're not going to, you know, experience it? Well, I'm talking about it because there's a lot of new drivers that's coming out here with aspirations of becoming the owner operator. 
And as I said before, that some of the owner operators that be on social media, you know, trying to, you know, give their experience or their point of view. Put that coffee down. Sometimes it could be misconstrued. Sometimes it could be misinformed. Sometimes there's misinformation. And a lot of times they come on social media to pretty much brag and boast and not help, if that makes any sense. There's a handful, and that's what I said before. It's like going fishing. You know, in order to get that, that pull out that right one, you got to go fishing and, and, and catch all the ones that you don't want in order to catch the ones that you do want. Fishing takes time. I got you a dollar. Oh, you almost had it. You got to be quicker than that. Oh. Having Fishing takes patience. That's why when you see a lot of a, a lot of fishermen out there, you know they they got their little they little chairs and they set their little pole up because fishing, you know, it it it, <laughs> it it's not gonna come, you know, instant gratification. You're not gonna catch that that catfish. You're not gonna catch that 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 hundred pound shark. Not at first, anyway. It takes time. So look at becoming an owner operator as fishing. I got you a dollar. Oh, you almost had it. You gotta be quicker than that. Okay. Don't just jump right into it because you see somebody out there saying, Oh, I'm making five dollars a mile, I'm making six dollars a mile. I'm only going a hundred miles down the way and I made uh X amount of dollars. Okay. You take your time, you 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 get your experience, and you learn. And what I want you to do is, if you're going to talk to these drivers that are owner operators, talk to them about their successes and failures, because you can't be successful if you don't have no failures. And the ones that don't want to talk about those failures, those are the ones you want to stay away from. You 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 don't want to to talk to them because all they're going to do is just try to give you the glimpse, the glamour, and all like that. You you want to know the hard truth. Numbers don't lie. Talk to the ones that talk numbers and not figures. When somebody come, when you come and ask somebody, hey, how much can I potentially make as a owner operator? And the first thing that comes out their mouth is, oh, you make six figures. That's not telling you nothing. Six figures, what's, what's that? I need numbers. Can I make anywhere between 77K, 80K, 90K, uh, 100k 200k 300k not figures figures don't tell me nothing numbers does remember that is 2023 a year to take the leap to become an owner operator some may say yes some may say no but it's up to you to decide they say that the economy is coming back but we don't know how long that's going to be. So is this a good time for you to pool all your money together and, and pump it into a truck, not knowing how the economy is going to is going to turn out in the near future, 2024, maybe 2025? Is it a, is it the right time? Maybe. That's where the resources that you gather and the research that you do will make that decision for you. They say that freight is back in demand. Is it though? Is it though? Look at it this way. It might be a point in 2023 
that there's way too many drivers and not enough freight. Y'all heard that saying before? Now, when there's not enough freight or way too many drivers, that means these brokers have more options to find somebody that will take the freight for them at a lesser price that you would normally take if there was a lot of freight and not enough drivers. Think about that. They say getting into the industry and you want to become an owner operator, it can translate into a stable and thriving industry, which gives good opportunity to anybody that's thinking about becoming an owner operator. So think about that when you decide to say, hey, let me risk it all. Let me gamble it all and become an owner operator. But listen, there are many resources available to make the shift. Get it? Shift. Explore how much you could make. Again, like I said, look at it this way. Ask for numbers and not figures. Try to get answers to your questions ask talk be inquisitive don't just let them brag about what they're making don't just be like oh well let me show you my settlement that's your settlement that's not going to be my settlement i'm a new guy you might be already making about 200k i'm not going to make that coming in the gate i gotta start from the bottom and work my way up to the top Maybe maybe I might have to take cheap, uh, cheap freight in order to make it to the top. Maybe I might have to be the backup trucker and wait in order to make it up to the top. Find out your biggest objections. And is it really worth it coming into the industry and becoming an owner operator? I got you a dollar. Oh, you almost had it. You gotta be quicker than that. Now, when you do become an owner operator, the very first step that you need to take, because there's seven of them, is to write out a business plan. A lot of you drivers don't do that. Now, don't get me wrong. When I started my business, ERS World Services back in the day, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't have a business plan. But later down the line, I put one together. I'm telling you, you need to put a business plan together beforehand. Get with the people that's in the know that knows how to put a business, big business, business plan together. How to get an LLC, how to get a DOT, how to get an MC. Majority of now, listen, majority of this information you can find for free on the internet you just might have to do a little bit of digging let me stop the show for a minute and talk about digging what i mean by do a little bit of digging again when you type in the information you know the keywords that you want to know about you know owner operating don't just settle for the first three pop-ups that comes up Try to dig deeper. Try to go down the line. Maybe you might have to go a couple of pages into Google to find the right one that you're looking for. Again, you got to go fishing. See, it comes right back to that. You, you got to go fishing for the good information that you're looking for. Okay? Now, don't just settle for any trucking guru on Instagram, on TikTok, on YouTube telling you, that hey for x amount of dollars i can help you get rich quick there's no get rich quick schemes in trucking it is not it is not just like everything else in the world it takes time it takes research jay-z did not become a success overnight Where's my leaf? Mm. 
Jay-Z didn't become a billionaire overnight. Dr. Dre did not become a billionaire overnight. Dr. Dre had to line himself with the people to help him get there to be a billionaire. He did not get there by himself. He may have started by himself, but in order for him to continue to be successful as he is now, he needs people in place to help him. Good people. Not the people that's just talking in your ear and asking you, hey, give me this, give me that, give me this, give me that. You need to put good people in place around you to help you be successful. And that's with any owner operations, not just in trucking. Seven steps, right? Seven steps to becoming an owner operator. And again, like I said, this is from the information that I gathered from different owner operators that I talked to. Shout out to Drill Sergeant. Shout out to a couple of others. And there, and I know some young jacks out there too that's that's a little bit successful. But they did the same thing that I'm telling you now. They took their time. They took they was patient enough to get the information they need to be where they at trucking the industry there's a lot of paths that you can take the most lucrative of course out of all of them is becoming your own boss is becoming the owner operator that that's it you want numbers not figures you don't want nobody to come and tell you oh you can make six figures who who cares about figures tell me how much I can make. Tell me the number. Do when I start off, would I be making 77K? Can I can I start off at 77K and make my way up to 299K? 373K? I mean, numbers don't lie. Okay? Numbers don't lie. So Again, seven steps that hopefully this may help you along the way. Gain, number one, gain truck driving experience as a company driver. Let me say that. Stop this show. Gain truck driving experience as a company driver. A lot of these gurus will say, hey, all you need is a Hey, I got some secret sauce to tell you. What if I told you that I can help you start a transportation company in under 72 hours for a very low investment and you can earn up to five figures a month from home or from a small office only, only using a calculator, laptop, a phone, and of course the internet. To start your own trucking company. Well, that may be true for some. That may be true for some, but if you don't get your CDL, if you don't come out here and drive and see the experience for yourself, what we go through, how are you gonna run a successful trucking company if you don't know what the drivers go through, if you don't know how to do this, and if you don't know how to do that? How are you gonna run a successful trucking company from the comforts of your home, from a computer, a calculator and in a phone. How are you gonna do that? How are you gonna do that? You're gonna need to understand how dispatching works. You're gonna need to understand how the truck driver works. You're gonna need to understand how the brokering works. You're gonna need to understand that and you won't be able to understand that if you're sitting at home on your comfy couch, feeding your kid in one hand and watching and watching the stories in a, watching the stories on the other hand. Why would the little computer, the little Chromebook that you have in front of you, is that's all you got? If you're considering to become an owner operator, you have to have deep knowledge of the industry. And before you get that, it starts by you getting your CDL and coming out here and getting in the grind with the rest of us. It's a good idea to maybe have about 
I don't know, three to five years, but some of you guys are accelerated. So I, I've seen I've seen young jets become owner operators as early as a year. But you you want to take your time out here. You don't want to get out here and and just jump in the water full of sharks. Again, you gotta go fishing. Okay. Now be now taking the big step of becoming an owner operator again takes some years to you know to have up under your back. Have some experience. It does help. It does help a lot. It helps you understand the challenges that the drivers go through. It understand the issues that some of the drivers may face. So when the driver could come and ask you, the confident owner, about what's going on, you'd be able to say, oh, I've been in that situation before. This is how you do to get out. Have some trucking experience. It will help build up your professional network. For real, for real. If you're a driver, if you was a driver and you got that company experience and you've been with that company for a minute and you took the time to, to, to understand the company side of, of trucking, it will help a long way to help you find some good drivers that would work with you and to help you achieve your goal of what you're looking for. Number two. Decide if you want to lease or buy your equipment. Stop the show. There's a lot of companies out here, i.e. controversial company, Super Eagle, that would tempt you to come in and leasing with them with the lucratives of 88% of the, of the load or whatever the case. Decide whether it's leasing is good for you because a lot of people will say yes. A lot of people will say no. A lot of people have success. Again, numbers don't lie. Make sure you get the numbers when it comes to leasing because everybody will turn around and say, hey, you lease with us, you will make more money. Well, how much money? How much potential that I that I would get? What would I do? Well, you know. If you lease with us, you can you can refuse your loads. Okay, so if I refuse too many loads, is that going to harm me in some kind of way? Those are questions that you need to be asking. Now, is it good to lease or good to buy your equipment? Is it good to save up? Is it good to lease? Because like I said before, when you lease, if you get into leasing, leasing is not a end all thing you want to get into it save your money so that you can buy your equipment as an owner operator you have to decide whether you're going to lease or buy your truck now when you buy trucks just know that a, a good used truck is going to cost you still in about the 80s or 90s and a brand new truck is going to run you. It's going to run you at least a hundred. At least. If you want all the bells and whistles. Oh yeah. Inspect to come out of the pocket. You definitely going to have to have a decent down payment. $500, $600 ain't going to work. You're going to need about 50 K. You're going to need about 80 K. You're going to need about 90 K. Hell. You might want to save up to 100K in order to put that down payment. You know, you got to have a good credit score. You got to, again, that's when you get people in place to help you get yourself situated before you decide to jump into this. Got to have a good credit score. If you don't have a good credit score, you need to hopefully have somebody in place that does have a good credit score because nobody ain't gonna finance you a truck if your credit score ain't all that hot and you can turn around and say oh well you know my credit score was bad because back in the day and all like that they're gonna take all of that they don't care if it was back in the day or in future present time if your credit score is not good just know that Either they're going to help you out by giving you an APR that's going to be in the stratosphere or they're not going to they're not going to give you a finance. 
You also might want to consider carefully everything from weight capacity to fuel efficiency to insurance and maintenance costs when you're going out there to buy a truck. Fuel alone can run you about 50 to 70K. I'm just saying. Now, a lot of people turn around and be like, well, I, I, I know how to control my fuel. I know how to do. No, no. That works for you. It doesn't work for everybody, though. Again, I'll say it again. You got to go fishing. I got you a dollar. Oh, you almost had it. You're going to be quicker than that. Having when researching trucks, it's important to find out which truck will suit your needs not only for today but is your truck is going to be future proof is it going to have a good resale value after you get what you want out of it how much on average that you got to maintain it does the truck break down every day does the br truck break down every other day because if you're owner operator with one truck and it breaks down that messes with your money now the profits that you have is coming out to getting that truck fits. Now you got to get that truck fits. You got to rent another truck in order to keep going until your truck gets fits. Now you, the money that you put into the truck to get fits, you got to recoup. Now, instead of on the profit side, you got to recoup all that money until you start seeing a profit and hope to pray the God, my God, that the truck don't break down again while you in the recouping phase of getting that money. How much does it cost to run the truck? How much does it cost to insure the truck? And last but not least, what is going to be the safety rating of your truck? Because if you get pulled over by DLT, and they do an inspection and it, it and, and your truck is not up to par every day for the last 10 years loretta there has been giving me a large black coffee today she gives me a large black coffee only it's got sugar in it a lot of sugar i just came back to complain how you boys put those guns down see these are things that people is not telling you you got to come over here to the recruiter call channel let me stop the show. Listen, my name's Lockout Man, right? I've been driving trucks for seven years. Out of the seven years, I've been with four companies. And I have driven with a black ops company. But out of the four, out, out, out of the four companies that I had, I learned while I was there. I learned everything I need to learn from U.S. Express. I learned everything I need to learn from a small company called Booster Motorways. I learned everything I need to learn from JNR Schwugel. I learned everything I need to learn from the Black Ops Company. That's how I'm able to gather all the information, all this experience, because I took the time to learn. And I could give you my experience. That's, that's what it is. I can give you my experience. That's why I'm making the kind of money that I'm at right now because I took all of the information that I learned from those companies to negotiate and get where I'm at with the current company where I'm at now, which I'm comfortable. Well, let me rephrase that. Don't be comfortable. Never, ever, ever get comfortable with a company. Because as soon as you get comfortable with the company, that's when the problem starts. Never be comfortable. Always be hungry. Always keep your head on a swivel when it comes to a company that you're driving for. If you hear, if you start to hear something funny about that company, start asking questions. Don't just be like, oh, well, you know, I heard that it might happen and all like that. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I heard that it happened. No, no start asking questions because if new if the news grab it and you the last person to find out you don't want to be the last person to a party you don't ever want to be the last man to a party you feel me that's why i show up to a job an hour before 
sometimes too. You always want to be up on on current events with the company you're driving for. Who knew that U.S. Express was going to get sold to uh, Knight Swift? Who knew that CFI was gonna was gonna go under? You see what I'm saying? You see where I'm going with this? Who knew that Arrow was gonna go out of business? Who knew that that Miami company was gonna go out of business? They just had they just had a dude talk about how great the company is, and then a couple of weeks later, we had the owner or the president of the company talking about well because of because of freight rates, we have to close down. Always keep your head on the swivel when it comes to the companies that you're driving for. Because as soon as you hear something, that's when you start asking questions. All right, let's get back at it. Number three, form a business and register a USDOT number. Now, Forming the business and registering your numbers and the numbers that you need for your business, you can find out all that information for free on the internet. Again, like I said, with that said, you got a deep dive. Now, there's gurus all over social media that will tell you, you pay me X amount of dollars and I can do this for you. But what are they doing? What book you reading out of? As a new owner, you officially needs to get a business license. You need a business license. You need a, a, a you need a, a es a EOS number. Let me see what all the stuff that I needed. I needed an EOS number. I needed a business license, and I needed something else. I forgot what it was, but I got that too when I started my. Uh, road service business a business oh the eos number is like the company social security number because you're going to need that number in order to open up a business banking account i'll talk about banking accounts in a little bit if you're still here with me man i really do appreciate you guys listening and taking the time to give me a chance to give you this information man thank you if you like what i do over here man support the channel you know support support the channel any kind of way that you can you could support it monetarily or you could just simply support it just by hitting that like button or just watching the the ads that comes through the that comes through the videos man there's a lot of ways that you can support this channel so thank you very much i want to i just want to appreciate everybody that that's in the industry and that's using me as a tool to help them along the way so thank you very much let's get back at it a business license will help you protect your personal assets like your house and car stop the show a llc and again all this information is free online llc helps you with liability and makes it limited if anything should happen to your business say like you get into an accident say like if your driver crash all that money that you pulled together could go up in smoke just like that and not only that they will come after your personal assets as well so not only that they can bankrupt your company but they can bankrupt you personally too if your business face bankruptcies or lawsuits, many small business owners opt for a LLC. But again, it is a good idea to get people in the know that will help you to figure out which route as far as business to go. Is LLC a good thing? Is incorporating better? Is uh, a sole proprietor is good? An attorney or an accountant will help you out on what works best in your situation. Like I said before, you need a US dot number, you need this number, and you need a whole bunch of other numbers as well. But you will also, again, find all that out on the internet after you go fishing. 
See how it comes back to fishing. Number four, man. <laughs> I know it's a lot. So bear with me. You know, just bear with me. This is stuff. New drivers. I'm a new driver advocate. I'm doing this for you, man. I'm taking personal time out of my information. I could be watching TV right now. I could be playing my PlayStation. I could be playing Xbox right now. I don't have to, I don't have to go out and, and do all this stuff for you. But I like doing it though. A DOT. You 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 could probably go to the office and make sure everything is in order before you start driving that commercial vehicle. Number four, get get your truck and trailer third party inspected. When you get your truck off the yard, when you pick it up, they're gonna inspect it. They're gonna give it their five point inspection. It's always good to take your truck to get inspected again. You know, have a fresh pair of eyes to look at it, right? You might want to go to a, a, an inspection station that has credentials from the FMCSA. They will inspect both your truck vehicle and your driving record. This one ensures everything that meets safety standards set by the FMCSA. Without this information on file, no company will hire you as an owner operator truck driver. So you definitely got to make sure you have your affairs in order. Cross your I's, dot your T's. Because if you don't and something happens, it's going to fall back on you. That shit is on you. Also, if, you, if you're thinking about it, because I have talked to drivers that went as far as doing this, you know, think about getting your authority. You know, this certifies that whether you are not insured to drive a commercial vehicle in your state or country, but you will need to prove insurance before getting hired by any company. Joining a logistic solution companies like the companies that's out here will give you access to their discounts and everything else across North America. Let's continue. Step five, obtain a motor carrier number all right that's a different number from the dot all right a motor carrier number is a unique identification number that the u.s department of transportation assigns to commercial vehicle so they can be recognized on the road and it's required for all interstate transportation of goods by your truck. Again, you'll need a US number, which you'll register with a dispatch service and when you buy your truck. Without it, you won't be able to completely, e I mean, you would not be able to complete either task legally. Okay? Just keep all this stuff in mind, man. I got a couple of more. I only got a couple of more. And if Again, if you with me this long, man, thank you. Obviously, the information that I'm giving you is valuable. And if you feel that this information is valuable, consider subscribing, man. Because I take time out of my busy schedule to find information for you new drivers out here that's interested in coming into the industry or are interested in becoming an owner operator because a lot of this stuff, people don't tell you. And this is coming from a non-owner operator, but I'm I'm here to see and wish you success in this industry. You won't get it if you don't get the proper help that you need. And I'm hoping that I am one of one of the one of the channels that you can consider giving you the proper help that you need. Number six, make sure your insurance is up to date. After number six, I have number seven, and then we'll finish up. And then you can you can go back and listen to your heart's contempt on, on the seven steps you need to become an owner-operator. To become a successful owner-operator. Not just, don't just use these steps. Again, do your research. You know what I'm saying? Take your time to 
to to to find information needed to get where you want to go. Damn good coffee and hot. Again, use me as a tool. Make sure your insurance is up to date. You're going to make sure that you need insurance on your truck, maybe about a million dollars. I think that's the minimum right there. Truck and trailer. As an owner operator, you are responsible for re running the entire business. And if you're going to run the if you're going to run this entire business that uses heavy machinery and carry maybe products that might be hazardous, we haven't even touched on that part yet. You're going to have to operate safely and legally on the roads with the confidence that you'll need a proper insurance coverage. Now, there's a lot of insurance agencies out here, progressive business, insurance companies like Progressive, uh, Liberty, uh, Geico, State Farm. You know, all those insurance companies do have business insurance, so you might need to take the time to figure out which one of those companies are good for you. Not all of them is good. Some of them is trash. But as long as you take the time to figure out which one it is good, hopefully it will work out for you. Make sure the insurance that you obtain can cover all your needs. Liability protection for others involved in an accident that is caused by your you or your driver's negligence. You're going to need vehicle damage. You're going to need personal property and damage. You're going to need personal injury insurance. You're going to need medical payment coverage. You're going to need physical damage protection against damage done by other cars crashing into you. You're going to need fire. You're going to need theft. You're going to need collision coverage. You're going to need roadside assistance. You're going to need cargo liability, man. That's a lot. That's a lot that I just said that fills up your head on what you need as far as insurance goes, man. Fire, in case your truck catches on fire. You're going to need theft if somebody come over there and breaking your truck. You're going to need cargo in case somebody breaks into the, into the trailer and steal the cargo. All that stuff is your responsibility. That shit is on you. Every last one of those stuff is your responsibility. And it is a potential to have you to go into bankruptcy, bruh, if you don't have the right insurance coverages. Listen, when it comes to insurance, I, I learned this long time ago. You you don't wanna you don't wanna half step on your insurance. You don't. You don't wanna half step on your insurance. I remember one time that I did a lockout and unfortunately the the, the mechanism uh, was messed up, but it was already messed up prior to me coming there to try to unlock the door for him, right? So what the owner tried to do was they tried to call into my insurance and say, hey, you know, your, your, your driver messed up my door lock and I needed to get replaced. Well, he already signed off on the on the uh, on the disclosure that I have everybody signed off on. Plus, another thing too, I had video, so I had to send that and the video in to the to the insurance company so they can deny uh, so they can deny the, the 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 claim. But that's what you're gonna need, though. You're gonna need that good insurance, like you know, like a good neighbor. State Farm is there. Yes, sir. You're going to need that. I'm just saying you're going to need insurance to cover every inch of the truck and don't half step on that. Please don't half step on that, because if you get into a fatality accident, that's what that's what the lawyers is going to do. They're going to come after your insurance. If you don't have that insurance, they definitely is going to come after you. And step seven, step seven, I don't know, but step seven says join a logistic solution company if you like to avoid finding your own loads. 
meaning join a company that could help you find the good loads at the good rates that you're looking for. If you like to focus on driving and not finding loads like some drivers do, then you could probably join a logistic solution company. These companies will do all of the heavy lifting for you regarding finding loads and keeping your business running smoothly. The benefits of doing that and having that, you'll be able to spend more time with your family, friends, and focus on your health and wellness goals. And finally have time to work towards your financial success. In addition to using freight brokers, there are other ways to find loads, one of which is a load board. Those are online tools that allow truck drivers to find shippers and to find other order to conduct business quickly. Load boards are free for truckers and are ready and available on the internet. Low boards like uh, the DAT board, the DAT board, low boards like Trucker's Path. Now they have a low board. Other low boards like Shipettes, uh, Ship, uh, U Ship. Low boards like that, you'll take the time every morning. You'll get up, you open up your little Chromebook, and you start scrolling through, seeing you know what loads are available in your area and how much there asking for those loads now sometimes you might get stuck in the area where where the loads is 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 limited and you might just have to deadhead to an area where you could probably pick up some good freight now with deadheading you might need to finagle the deadhead miles in a lot of brokers will do that but a lot of brokers won't just make sure that you can find all that out. Ask questions. Again, you got to go back fishing. I got you a dollar. Oh, you almost had it. You got to be quicker than that. Oh. All right. Companies are paying for the same type of loads you're interested in hauling. Some boards will even allow you access to load that they don't have listed in their company. So... With all of that said, y'all, with all of that said, in conclusion, all right, I hope this information help you decide if you're really ready to embark on your career as an owner operator. I really do. I really do. I, I want to start by giving you my best wishes. I put you in my prayers and I hope everything works out for you as you embark on this new and exciting and and scary career as an owner operator all right you be sure that you might end up making some good money and again don't ask for figures ask for the numbers because again numbers do not lie all right numbers do not lie a lot of people will turn around and say yo i make six figures and all like that okay well how much did you actually make? How much did you actually take home? How much of everything that you took out that you made that will actually show you a profit? And then that'd give that potential person pause to say, well, I think being a company driver would probably be the best way to go right now in 2023. Okay you'll be sure to get good money and enjoy the freedom of working for yourself. If you aren't sure where to start, Lockout Men and the Recruiter Podcast is here for you. All right? It's here for you. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to come over and subscribe, like, watch, engage with the community i'm like beethoven with the bass on it me class kids went pop death to the hater won't stop let's talk key scales won't drop you don't even need a scale to know i'm on top me and mozart bars you got pops urge right tiffany a whole symphony you a symptom me but go off or make a masterpiece for you or at least it's gonna hit like rump bump bump y'all fit to me like the symphony your career's done, done, done.